Shortly before we launched in June 2021, we made a last minute decision to fit a wind vane. This would make the long summer trip that we had planned with just two of us on board a lot more manageable. And also, it would fulfill the dream I'd had for a very long time of sailing a boat with a wind vane. The choice of wind vane was pretty straightforward. We were ashore at Baltic Wharf, which is where Sea Feather were based, and they had units available that we could fit at short notice. We're going to break this down into three parts. Firstly, a look at fitting the vane. Secondly, some examples of use in different conditions. And then thirdly, our thoughts on it. To begin fitting the vane, the first step was to create access to the inside of the transom. We then suspended the mounting bracket on rope from the push pit. We carefully checked we were central to the transom and as high up as possible. Then it was time to take the plunge and drill the four mounting holes. The kit supplied from Sea Feather includes every nut and bolt you need, including backing plates for the inside of the transom. The next job was to fit the first set of turning blocks onto the push pit. These needed to be set quite high to give us the right clearance over the combing down to the lower turning blocks. Finally, the connecting pin needs to be mounted to the upper side of the tiller such that the control lines can be connected. And here we are, job done and ready to launch. Here we have just hooked up the control lines for the first time and it's a really amazing moment as the boat starts sailing herself. We requested an extended control line from Sea Feather, such that it would reach into our companionway, as the standard one supplied was too short. So from the shelter of the spray hood, using the extended control line, we are able to alter course while it's raining. And Yay. while it's not raining. And even when it's not raining, yes. What we've done here is what we found works quite well for us is to put a preventer on the boom and then roll in more genoa than you probably would have done otherwise and that seems to be keeping us on a steadier course downwind. If we unroll the genoa fully now we would be snaking around um, substantially more than we are at the moment another experiment with the sea feather we're just uh, trying to goose wing um, we don't have a whisker pole which would I guess help we've rolled a little bit of genoa up not that we need to but just to, to stop it flogging around so much um, but yeah this is uh, this is how we're going downwind with the um, sea feather in charge
freezing sheet up now. Holding a pretty steady course. Sitting here under the uh, cockpit canopy. It's all pretty relaxed, I would say. under Genoa only Steady on the compass as well. We've now gone up to a close haul course. Just, uh, holding the course pretty well at the moment. Just experimenting with the sea feather on um, on a dead run, just for goose winging. We have got a preventer rigged on the main, but we don't have a um, we don't have a whisker pole, as we said before. Um, the main's just back rigged there, but it's it's not doing too badly. Sailing downwind with the Genoa only in. Uh, Pretty light winds. We're doing about four and a half knots over the ground, but I've got a bit of tide, so we're probably doing about three and a half through the water. Um, but it seems to be uh, seems to be working okay. about half an hour after the uh, previous clip. We've now put the main up, probably doing about five knots over the ground, so maybe four, four and a bit through the water. That's how the, uh, the sea feather's coping. So what do we think? Basically, the bottom line is it's a great bit of kit. Over the summers of 21 and 22, we covered nearly two and a half thousand nautical miles, and the vast majority of that was under the sea feather. Whilst we could have done those trips without a wind vane, it would have been unpleasant and a lot of hard work and concentration hand steering. It wouldn't be fair to say that the wind vane worked perfectly in all conditions. We did have some times where, particularly off the wind, a combination of swell and wind strength and direction meant we couldn't get a steady course, but that was pretty rare. Most of the time it performed really, really well. The one fly in the ointment is the servo blade. 
We removed and dry stored the whole unit at the end of summer 21. It had only been on the boat for about 10 weeks, the time that we were away cruising. It was dry stored over the winter and then we refitted it at the start of our 22 cruise. Very soon the finish, the varnish finish on the servo blade began to deteriorate and it actually got to the point where the blade would not lift up when it was released from the unit. We assumed that the wood has swelled up a little bit and although the pivot bolt was loose as it should be, it wouldn't lift up and at times it was very, very difficult to lift the blade up. That will need some work on it in terms of thinning the blade down and revarnishing. That's a bit disappointing um, to have to do that, especially as the unit has been dry stored and not left out in the, in the weather. So other than the issue with the servo blade, we are really, really pleased with the sea feather. I have no experience of any other wind vanes to compare it to, but the sea feather is really easy to fit. It's light enough to be able to lift it easily from the mounting block back into the cockpit when you want to do so. The unit feels very well made, but perhaps most importantly, it makes sailing very relaxing and less tiring as it continually works away silently and consuming no power. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that I can't imagine any of the sailing that I want to do in the future would be without a wind vane.